Good morning. Uh, today's fun and games. German pup tent, which I'm sure you're aware, really, is just two ponchos buttoned together. Much like the Levu, just a different shape. I like the idea of it, but the one thing with this sort of setup I don't like is the fact that you've got two poles. Now, I don't really want to carry the weight of the poles and also with any setup like this whether it be tent uh, tarp shelter anything like that I don't know whether it's just me but the poles always get in the way I now end up knocking them over so yes it works like this but I'm going to try some setups see if I can get away with not bringing them um, anyone that hasn't seen this I'll just give you a quick look round. Right, as I said, two halves, which are really ponchos. That's why you've got all these extra buttons and stuff. You can also see here, I hope, this is actually the, the sleeve holes when you're wearing it. Size-wise, it's not bad. Um, it's meant to be two man, but you wouldn't be two big men, let's put it that way, if you was in there. From the extremes, from point to point where the sort of the door sections are, it's about eight or nine feet, which sounds, you know, good. But here is one pole, and here is the second pole. And it's only between them two that it's sort of full width and that is only a shade over six feet so it would be snug for two people one and gear fine here's the, the top it just overlaps and buttons together if you see there it looks inside um, Yes, it should be waterproof in theory. I would say it's all about where you set it up. Obviously, in woodland, you've got a bit more shelter. If there is any wind, I would set it up, as I've got it buttoned at the moment, with the wind blowing this side. So if there's any water does get blown, it'll blow up and over as opposed to under. But yeah, that's the the basics of it. Let me uh, put it down there a minute. Oh, a bit skew if I see it. Well, I noticed it. pulled out one of the pegs by standing on it. The other thing really you, you should have guy lines on it seeing as i'm not going to use it in this shape i was just setting it up and having a measure i didn't bother it was only the tension of the door section holding it up so i have to hold the pole but yeah that gives you an idea of the size it's it's not massive i'd probably have to go diagonal if i use it like that um nice and dark though and apparently, I mean, I've never used one of these, or a Levu, or anything like that. And apparently they're very warm. So it might be a, a winter option for me. So yeah, that's basically what they're like. Time to change it up a bit. See what we can do. Now that would probably make more sense for me. I'll just uh, ridge line between the two trees. the line through the the large grommet where the poles normally come out so the line's running on the inside holding the roof up if it's wet obviously I'll have to sort some sort of uh, drip line so the water didn't follow it in through the grommet uh, but also I would probably put a line on here with a prussic knot anyway to pull the tension out a little bit more 
my mind that's a much more user-friendly space yes that's more like it I think okay let's try something else because it is nice out here and it'd be a shame to go home too early I've got all day so what the hell why not Now that's more like it. Um, I'll probably have to do something just to lift that slightly. So I've got a slight sag here which will collect the water. Um, but that's the more usable way, I think, for me personally anyway. I do like a bit of room. Um, And the waterproofing isn't the end of the world because a setup like this, I'd probably have my bivvy with me anyway. So, hmm. let me uh, let me bring you in a bit closer. Hang on. Oh, excuse me. Right. So that shelter half is pinned down completely in the normal fashion. Normally the pole would be up in there, right in the way of the door, as per normal. Um, but I've of course got the ridge line, and I've I've just lifted up the far edge using their poles, guide it out, and then bungeed down the edges there, all to get you know keep the weather out. But it does mean that you're open like this at the front. Good 180 degrees view, uninterrupted, which is really what I like. And even if it, if it was windy, as long as the wind was coming in that direction, wind, rain, whatever, it would stop most of it. It wouldn't be the end of the world. And if it did start to get manky and start coming in that end, um, there's no reason why I couldn't, where's my finger there, pull the pole out, undo the bungee, and just button up that end. You know, if the weather was coming in that direction. And you could leave this end open. Yes. Very interesting. So it's the first time I've even had a proper look at one of these. And with all these buttons that they've got all over the place, obviously mainly for, for poncho use, um, it does make it sort of quite versatile. I'm, I'm going to have to play a bit more and see what, what I can do with one bit button to another. Let me put you back there. There we go. I hope you're still in shot. Um, yeah. I like it like this. This is cool. I mean, I would use it in the, you know, the proper intended tent shape if the weather was awful or it was really cold. That, you know, I'll get it. Um, but I think it'd be a bit snug. It's all right if you're just getting in it to have a kip. But if you had to get in your tent, you know, in the late afternoon, early evening, because the like it was pouring with rain or something. It's a small space and a dark space to spend 12 hours or whatever in. I think having it like this is a better option. Cool. I'm liking it though.
Right, almost back to civilization. But you can hear the traffic noise. I hate this bit. Never mind. It's got to be done. Thanks for watching, guys. Home time.